But I'm just trying to show you that things happened and things are happening roughly within 100 years. Let me tell you about another 100 year thing. Last week, if you, if you were part of this lecture, we talked a little bit about Heritage Foundation. If you've been paying attention to the news, the, the whole week, and I, 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 I promised that I did not coordinate with the news. I had no idea that they were gonna make this a topic of much discussion in the past week. The Heritage Foundation, I told you about the think tanks, and I said the most potent one, the one that we have to keep our eye on, the one that is in its factory, so to speak, in its laboratory, cooking up new policies that may or may not have a positive impact on us. Well, that think tank, the Heritage Foundation, I'm gonna tell you again, go look at it, but I'm gonna tell you to look at Project 2025. That's their new uh, main thing. You know, I told you last week that 60% of the policies and the laws that ultimately were enacted uh, during the Reagan and the Bush administration, the first Reagan, the first Bush, but Reagan and the first Bush administration, that those laws and those policies were cooked up largely 60% by the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is alive and well, and they've got a new list of policies and procedures. And I'm gonna to suggest to you that if those laws are enacted, those policies are enacted, we're gonna go back. And this is about discerning because see, actually we've talked so far about in, a, in our first session about intergenerational erosion, we, we talked last week uh, more uh, about who are the background players who are playing in this behind the scenes. And now we're talking about this thing about a repeating cycle. But the Heritage Foundation has a project 2025. Now you, you may say, well, what does it have to do with me? Well, you need to read it again. And, and I know that some of you, because I, I, I talked to some of you after the class last week, you went and you immediately start going to those sources and researching it. And that's what I want. I don't want you to become a, a, a Jerry Gurley clone. Or I don't want you to be a Jerry Gurley prophet. I don't want you to give me carte blanche. I don't give myself carte blanche. I'm going to research and fact check myself after this, this lecture. If you've gone to these sites that I, and you've done your independent research, then I'm happy. Because one of the things that people uh, are, are our people, and, and not just our people, I think all people, most people are guilty of, of letting someone else do the research for them and just give me the cliff notes and give me the summary version. And I, if you said it, and I believe you. And, and so I'll follow you. I'm not encouraging you to do that at all. I'm encouraging you to be an independent thinker. But I, I think uh, Project 25, or the Project 2025 is something that everyone in this class uh, should research and maybe even after the class, and be prepared to discuss next time we meet. Because, But what I want to tell you now, I want to tie this into the 100-year cycle. Project 2025. Well, if we could back up 100 years back from 2025, there was this famous manifesto that was developed by a man who tried to overthrow the government. It failed. He was arrested. But he was very charismatic. And in that manifesto, he listed what he would do if he ever became the head of government. He, he, he focused on the people that need to, to be dealt with, the, the people that needed to be arrested, the people that in some cases needed to be killed. He talked about radically rechanging government and people didn't take him seriously. They, they thought that he was a joke. They thought that he was using what is called hyperbolic language, which means exaggerating for emotional impact. But he wasn't. He wrote this book that became a bestseller, that became the equivalent to the Bible in his country. It was called Mein Kampf, which by interpretation means my struggle. You may know this man as Adolf Hitler. 100 years ago, he tried to take over the government. He tried to do a coup. It failed. He was, a, he was charged with a crime. He wrote a manifesto. People laughed. They said, rational minds will never embrace his extreme perspectives and his extreme, we have a constitution, we are never going to give this constitution up. We are reasonable people, we are faith-based people. Guess what? Because they were not aware of, of repeating cycles, because they took him lightly, millions upon millions of human beings died. That was 100 years ago. This book became popular in 1925. 
now we have project 2025. I have to tell you that I'm somewhat alarmed by that. No, I'm substantially alarmed. And I don't want to run around and tell you that your hair should be on fire, but your hair should be on fire because we have to discern who's working for us and who's working against us. And we, meaning don't take Jerry Gurley's work, do your own independent research, but also look at that Mein Kampf, my struggle. It's, I was reading it this week because of course it's been rendered, it was originally written in, in German, but he had a lot to say about a lot of people. We know what he had to say about the Jewish people book, but did you know that, that in that book, he had something to say about uh, black people. He didn't like black people. In fact, in his, when he became uh, the chancellor, when he became the, 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 the Führer of, of Germany, what he had put into the law was that all biracial, all black and, 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 and white children were, fought, were, uh, were forced to be sterilized. It was the policy because you were subhuman, you were something, some type of mutation that shouldn't be allowed to exist. All biracial children were sterilized so that they could not reproduce. And black people were also put in concentration camps. We don't talk about that, but I'm just saying, we think that things can't happen. We think that history is linear. And what I'm, this whole lecture is about is that history is circular and that there are perceivable cycles and that if we're in winter, we don't need to be headed to the beach. That's not gonna give us the, the relief that we need. If we're in winter, we need to find some coats.